Welcome to Wagon Train Wednesdays, presented by The Archway. When Standing Bear was born, in about 1829, the Ponca people lived in villages of earth lodges along the Niobrara River. They raised vegetables and fruit trees, and traveled westward for seasonal bison hunts. They competed for resources and often engaged in conflict with their age-old enemies, the Brule and Ogallala Lakota. In 1854, the Kansas-Nebraska Act created the territories of Kansas and Nebraska and brought a flood of immigrants to the area. By 1862, white settlers were moving in and building towns where the Ponca cornfields had once been planted. The Ponca people endured a smallpox epidemic, raids on their villages by the Lakota, and the influx of white immigrants. But they adapted to the changes that were forced upon them. The tribe signed four treaties with the United States government. In the final treaty of 1865, they agreed to give up most of the land they had been promised in earlier treaties in exchange for protection from enemy tribes, cash annuities, and a smaller, permanent reservation home on the Niobrara. In the 1870s, Standing Bear and his family lived as frontier farmers in a furnished log house with a field that was 500 yards long. They had a stable for their horses and pens for their pigs and cows. Many of the Ponca people lived just as the white settlers did, and planned to continue to live in peace on the land that their treaties promised to them for generations to come. In a letter to Washington, the government agent who worked for the Ponca people reported that Standing Bear would make an excellent, even an exemplary farmer if fair opportunities were offered, where there was no common enemy, such as the Sioux, to be dreaded. Unfortunately, the U.S. government signed a treaty in 1868 with the combative bands of the Sioux Nation and promised them a vast reservation home. For reasons that remain unclear, the new Sioux reservation included most of the land that the government had already promised to the Ponca. On January 24, 1877, United States Indian Inspector E.C. Campbell was sent to inform the Ponca people that, in accord with the federal policy of Indian removal, they were to be voluntarily moved to Indian Territory in Oklahoma. Standing Bear was among the group of tribal leaders who were selected to inspect and approve their new home before the move took place. The Ponca leaders were not happy with the land and the climate in Indian Territory, and rejected the government's offer to move them but Native Americans were not recognized as citizens and had no legal means to object to their treatment. Many resisted, but in the end, the U.S. military forced them to move south to Indian Territory in present-day Oklahoma. During the 600-mile walk to their new home, nine people died, including Standing Bear's daughter, Prairie Flower. Life in Indian Territory was hard on the Poncas. The land wasn't suitable for farming shelter and farming equipment that the government promised were not provided. Many of the Ponca people died of starvation and malaria. By January 1879, nearly one-third of the relocated Ponca people were dead, including Standing Bear's son, Bear Shield. When Bear Shield was near death, Standing Bear promised to bury him in their tribal homeland in Nebraska. On January 2, 1879, Standing Bear and 30 Ponca people left Indian Territory with the body of Bear Shield and began the long walk back to Nebraska. When they reached the Omaha Reservation, they were welcomed as friends, but they had left Indian Territory without permission and Brigadier General George Crook had them arrested and taken to Fort Omaha. Crook was sympathetic to the Ponca travelers and detained them at the fort so they could rest, regain their health, and seek legal relief. General Crook also told the Ponca story to Thomas Tibbles, an advocate for Native American rights, who was an editor for the Omaha Daily Herald. Tibbles published the story and attorneys John L. Webster and Andrew J. Poppleton offered to represent Standing Bear when he sued the U.S. government for unlawful detention. During the trial, Standing Bear made an impassioned speech in the courtroom in which he asserted, I am a man. On May 12, 1879, Judge Elmer S. Dundee, in the very first decision of its kind, ruled that an Indian is a person, within the meaning of habeas corpus, and is entitled to the rights and protections provided by law. Standing Bear and the Ponca continued their journey to their former home along the Niobrara River, and Bear Shield's remains were buried as he had wished. Learn more about the Ponca and the story of Standing Bear. Find these books at your local library or online. I'm a Man, Chief Standing Bear's Journey for Justice by Joe Starita. 
and Walks on the Ground, A Tribal History of the Ponca Nation by Lewis V. Hedman. Find more videos in the Wagon Train Wednesday series on the Carney Archway YouTube channel. Be sure to follow the Archway on Facebook to see future Wagon Train Wednesday videos.